Coming up on today's Locked On Dodgers, Kenley Jansen is no longer a Dodger. A holdup with Hamza Alberto might actually help the Dodgers a little bit. And the first weekend of spring games are through. What happened? That's what's on tap, so make sure to keep it Locked On Dodgers. You are Locked On Dodgers, your daily Los Angeles Dodgers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yo, 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 Dodger fans, Vince Samperio here, Chavez Ravine Fiends, and this is Locked On Dodgers. We are part of the Locked On Podcast Network, the number one local sports daily podcast network. Locked On, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Dodgers your first listen of the day every day. Remember, we are free and available wherever you get podcasts and on YouTube by searching for Locked On Dodgers. Or even better, just subscribe in all those places and you'll see us every day because we don't miss a day. If this is your first time listening. Like I said, I'm Vince Samperio. Jeff Snyder, my usual co-host, won't be with us today. But we're both lifelong Dodger fans. We both have worked in the press box and locker room. But that doesn't make us insiders. We're just here to give you the smart fans perspective on our boys in blue every single weekday morning. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and listen to us every day. Let's talk about the Dodgers. Let's talk about what happened over the weekend. We got a lot to get into. Freddie Freeman's press conference, just the first weekend of games. Uh, Hans Alberto is delayed due to visa issues, so that might help the roster crunch for a little bit. But the biggest news, I think, out of the weekend is not necessarily what happened to the Dodgers, but uh, someone that won't be with the Dodgers, and that's Kenley Jensen. Uh, Kenley Jensen signed a one-year $16 million deal with the Braves, and he will no longer be a Dodger for the first time in his career. Uh, in terms of, you know, in terms of the Dodgers, specifically on field, not, you know, it, a loss, yes, not the biggest loss, only because their bullpen theoretically is one of their strengths at the moment. You got a lot of strong arms there. You got a lot of guys co- that are supposed to come back and provide, uh, you know, some some big time innings. And you know, realistically, the Dodgers don't need Kenley Jensen now. You know, the Kenley Jensen that the Dodgers got last year was pretty good throughout the year, other than a couple hiccups uh, that. You know, in theory, I guess, cost them the division, but they also cost themselves a the division in other games. Uh, but then the Kenley Jansen we saw in October was lights out, didn't allow a run, uh, if I'm not mistaken, was completely dominant, came up in key spots, got some big strikeouts uh, in the wild card game, in some of the other games in the, in the DS and OCS. So, lot, you know, that Kenley Jansen, yeah, it, it's, it's still a loss, but the bullpen isn't depleted by any means. And, you know, when you got, got, when you got, a bullpen with, you know, Gratterall, Vessia, uh, you know, Daniel Hudson, obviously Blake Trinan. You got a bunch of guys uh, hopefully trying to come back and, and be better this year. Victor Gonzalez, you got guys trying to come back healthy in, in Ferguson and Canely. Uh, and then whoever gets pushed down from the who's not a starting in the starting rotation. You got Danny Duffy coming midseason. You got Dustin May possibly coming midseason if they don't trust him out to be a starter. So there's a lot of arms there for, for the bullpen. So that's specifically. But, you know, let's talk about why the Dodgers didn't bring back Kenley Jensen. And it honestly seems like a matter of Freddie Freeman actually becoming a Dodger, throwing a small wrench into things. The Dodgers still wanting to bring back Kenley Jansen, but as Kenley said, and I believe Dave Roberts both said, it was a matter of timing. And what they mean by that is, you know, Kenley expanded a little bit more. Basically, he wanted to come back to the Dodgers. Um, The Dodgers wanted him back. But because of the Freddie Freeman signing, the Dodgers needed to a clear some spots on the forty man, and possibly clear some some payroll uh, because they wanted to get under stay under the two hundred and ninety million luxury tax, um, at least for now, stay under the two hundred the fourth tier of the two hundred ninety million luxury tax, and the Braves offered Kenley Jansen that that one year deal that he got. And they kind of put a timeline on or a deadline on it. At the end of the day, Jensen had to make a decision uh, because he can't just sit around and wait for the Dodgers, realistically. So he made that decision, went to the Braves for him. He says, you know, it's kind of one of those 
if you had to leave the team, like it, it's similar to Freddie Freeman. If you had to leave the team you've been with almost half your life, uh, then it, it, it's not quite a homecoming for Kelly Jansen, but he said he grew up watching the Braves on TV, Fred McGriff specifically, and then Andrew Jones being from Curacao. And obviously that's where Kenley Jensen's from. So, you know, rooting for them. Uh, Kenley Jensen's older brother was signed by the Braves. So Kenley had spent time in Florida uh, for some of those spring training camps before. So in the end, it worked out for him. The Braves had to a pretty strong bullpen as well. Um, you know, he, he's reunited a little bit, I guess, with Alex Anthopoulos, who was around here for the Dodgers in 2016, 2017. So, you know, at the end of the day, it worked out for all parties in, in terms of, you know, no bad blood. It definitely was not the same situation as, as the Freddie Freeman and Braves uh, situation as it is with this one and the Dodgers. And I'm sure most Dodger fans, you, you saw the reactions on social media. Some Dodger fans are happy. No, no more Jansen. Some people were reflecting on, you know, congrats, you know, kind of like. I'm not mad that you're leaving necessarily, but I want to make sure that, you know, you want to make sure that you're giving your respect to somebody who, you know, who was really good for the Dodgers for a long time, uh, had to reinvent himself, did reinvent himself, really came back strong last year and, you know, was, was overall a, a big part of the Dodgers success the last 10 years. And, you know, a big part of the, of, of the Dodgers legacy and, you know, maybe one day, I guess it's a one-year deal. They keep, you know, not ruling really out that he could come back, but realistically, you know, Johnson's going to keep getting older. Uh, I guess if he does keep signing one-year deals. It's possible. The, the report was that he was looking for a three-year deal this offseason. Didn't get any. Uh, the other report was that the Dodgers were willing to give him two years. But like I said, which I don't understand as far as I'm concerned, the payroll part of things doesn't really have to be worked out until the end of the year. Um, or, you know, they, they had more time, like in theory, let's just say they wanted to cut AJ Paul or they wanted to, you know, trade AJ Paul because that's kind of the biggest salary that's left that doesn't, or, or even David Price, maybe try to cut his salary in half and trade him. Obviously once the season starts, that money starts accumulating, but, Either way, you could have got rid of some of that. Obviously, it might have not been enough if you don't get rid of it from the start of the season. So I guess that makes sense. But like I said, at the end of the day, decisions have to be made on both sides. And Kelly Johnson made his decision. And now we'll probably see him uh, in October as, as the Braves and Dodgers have played each other in October a lot the last few years. So thank you to Kelly Jansen. I posted on Twitter. Well, first I posted on Twitter that uh, – Imagine when Freddie Freeman hits a walk-off home run against Kelly Jensen to advance in the playoffs. That was just setting up a scenario based on what had just happened in terms of two longtime stars kind of switching teams. Uh, the other part is, you know, like I said, salute to Kelly Jensen. Around for a long time. Great Dodger. Uh, my favorite Kelly moment slash part of his time with the Dodgers was the 2016 NODS Game 5 where he threw 51 pitches, went two and a third innings, um, got some big strikeouts, got some big outs in that game when the Dodgers' pen was taxed. W wasn't that good and was taxed. <clears throat> There's no way they win that game if he doesn't throw that many pitches. Hands the ball off to Kershaw. Kershaw gets the last two outs of the game, and the Dodgers end up advance to the NFCS, uh, where they did end up losing to the Cubs. But that series, if you ever want to watch a game, uh, that defines playoff stress. You know, there's a lot the Dodgers have had in, in recent years. Uh, but 2016 NODS Game 5, specifically the last three, four innings, is basically a game in itself. I think it's like an hour, hour and a half, uh, and it's just pure stress the whole time. Kenley Jensen had a big strike out of, Carlo, or, no, of uh, Anthony Rendon with the bases loaded. After intentionally walking Daniel Murphy to load the bases in order to face Rendon, struck out Rendon. He struck out Trey, Trey Turner. Uh, he had that. He yeah had a couple – Big outs that time. He did have four walks, one intentional. So he didn't like necessarily have his best stuff. I mean, he had, I would imagine, had pitched at least three of those games up to that point. So everyone was gassed. He pushed through, gave it all he had. And that'll be my uh, favorite Kelly Jensen moment for sure. But there's a lot out there that you could think of. Let's talk about more about the actual Dodgers now, getting into the roster. But first, let's talk about Bet Online. Bet Online. 
College turn, college basketball tournament finally upon us. Best time of the year for betting, as some people say. And for all the latest odds, contests, and player props, BetOnline.net is the number one source for all your sports betting needs and info. It's your best spot for all your sports scores, sports podcasts, and news this season. BetOnline.net is not just basketball, though. They're your continued source for all your sports wagering information no needs, including live betting and your favorite Vegas casino games. So head to the website, betonline.net, on your laptop and mobile device today and learn more about the trends and action. Bet online where the game starts. I want to thank you for making Lockdown Dodgers your first listen of the day every day. For a second listen, check out Lockdown MLB Prospects with host Lindsey Crosby. He is a prospect encyclopedia, and he's going deep on the MLB stars of tomorrow. It's free and available wherever you get podcasts. Just search for Lockdown MLB Prospects. All right, let's get into Dodgers roster. And they've been making some moves that have kind of pushed people and pushed to keep pushing people. One of those moves that has yet to become official, and we found out yesterday why, is Hanser Alberto. Hanser Alberto uh, was reported uh, almost over a week ago, maybe now, or a week ago at this point, and hasn't become official. And we found out it's because he's still stuck. Uh, in the Dominican Republic with visa issues and who knows, you know, that, that visa issues take different amount, you know, it, it's <clears throat> usually baseball players get a little bit of a leg up, but it's not necessarily something that's always going to be uh, easy to deal with, or, if, you know, if you're not entirely sure when exactly you're going to get that fixed, but for the time being, it could help out the Dodgers roster at least for a few, maybe a couple of weeks. So depending on when he finally does report, they will have to make the move official before he can, you know, start working out. They will have to make a 40 man roster move, which is, you know, he doesn't necessarily help the 40 man roster crunch at least, or maybe for another week or so, maybe they do try to find a suitor uh, for one of these people we've talked about. And maybe they do try to, you know, shed some of that the other way, but it might help the beginning of the season for the roster crunch, depending on if MLB, I don't know if they've decided on active roster yet, is it whether it's going to be 26 or 28. I know they were considering having a little bit bigger active roster at the start, just because, you know, short spring training and everything else. But as we talked about with the Dodgers, I mean, they assuming it's 20, it's 26 men and they go up 13 and 13. You got Barnes and Smith Taking up two spots, you got Freeman, Lux, Muncy, Trey Turner, Justin Turner, Cody Bellinger, Mookie Betts, AJ Pollock, Chris Taylor. That's at 11 right there. Uh, let's just say, okay, so that's 11 spots. So then you have, for the remaining two spots, you have Gavin Lux, Edwin Rios, Matt Beatty, Zach McKinstry. So that's four players. Realistically, McKinstry at this point probably starts in the minors just because him and Gavin Lux are a bit of a redundancy in terms of being able to play multiple spots and batting from the left side. Uh, but then you have Edwin Rios and Matt Beatty, who are probably also a slight redundancy. Edwin Rios gives you more power, more pop. Matt Beatty gives you probably a better hitter in general overall. But... You know, in, in theory, they're a little bit of a redundancy. So if Andrew Alberto does show up late, let's just say he shows up next week or late this week, probably wouldn't be ready for opening day. They might want to give him a couple extra weeks of time to get ready. So if you let's just say the Dodgers are trying to trade one of these guys, maybe they start the year on the on the opening day roster. They get they throw them some at bats early in the year, and maybe they can show some value, and maybe they can find a taker for them. Um, so it would help in that, in that sense, but at the end of the day, you know, somebody's time on either the active roster or the 40 man roster is coming to an end soon and the Dodgers will get him to Alberto in, which they, they don't need him. You know, they they'll be fine to survive however long it takes without him. Uh, but he does fill, you know, a role on the bench in terms of a right-handed bat in terms of utility, um, you know, kind of like not the not as good as Kike, but you know the Kike Hernandez role in theory, where him and Taylor are both the utility guys. Uh, obviously, he doesn't bring power like Kike does. He brings a little bit more contact skills, uh, less strikeouts, but 
something that the Dodgers need. So hopefully it doesn't take too long. Um, and like I said, we're not sure entirely. I know Andrew Friedman's probably working or he has ideas or he has thoughts and he's probably already at least theoretically solved the problem in his head, but who knows? But let's just say Alberto does take a couple extra weeks. The Dodgers will have a couple extra weeks to clear up whatever roster crunch they need to have. Uh, but realistically, it's not going to be, you know, he's not going to save anybody. Really, He's not going to save anybody by being late. He's just going to buy people a little bit extra time. But that's how it goes. Um, other than that, everyone else, I believe, is now reported and ready to go. Freddie Freeman showed up on Friday had his introductory press conference, and oh, man, see, this happens on the weekend shows, you, you forget things. The Dodgers signed another pitcher, Tyler Anderson. Uh, the Dodgers announced it during the spring training game on Friday that they signed Tyler Anderson to a one-year, $8 million deal. Tyler Anderson is one of those guys that I've talked about in the, or that we both talked about in the offseason of just – a fifth starter guy that has like a four or five ERA, but can pretty much pitch every five days. That's Tyler Anderson. He fits that. He's literally what, what, when you mentioned that role, that's literally what he is. Uh, last year, he made 31 starts a four, five, three ERA. For, uh, he pitched for the Mariners or he pitched for Pittsburgh and then got traded to the Mariners was a little bit better with Pittsburgh, but overall, you know, Good thing to write home about, but he's a guy that's going to eat innings for you. That, that's basically what you need. We talked about it uh, with Zach Greinke, but Zach, you know, Zach Greinke was one of those types where you don't really have to be that good anymore. You know, a couple good games here and there, but basically give you five, six innings every time out, every fifth day, and that would be more valuable than anything for the Dodgers, as we saw last year, you know, when they're throwing bullpen games all the time and, you know, not really – not really helping themselves out in terms of saving people and getting them ready for October. So Tyler Anderson fits that role perfectly. At this point, he can slot into the fifth starter role. Uh, and like I said, give you five, six innings every time out. Made 31 starts last year. Uh, for the most part, you know, made 32 starts in 2018. I would imagine, I guess he was hurt 2019, got hurt. Um, and then with the Giants in 2020, he, he took the ball, you know, almost every time out. And then last year, took the ball almost every time out. So, a good depth signing for the Dodgers in terms of getting their starting rotation in order. And now you start to think, okay, what's the plan? Because you have a rotation now of Bueller, Julio, Kershaw, Heaney, Tyler Anderson. Uh, on one hand, that's four lefties and a righty, which I don't think is that big a deal, but it's, it's like, what are they going to do? So Dave Roberts did say early on in the year they may piggyback some starts. So the first guy goes three, four innings. The next guy goes as, as deep as he can, and they try to play it that way. That makes sense, uh, at least early in the season, like I said, because guys probably won't be ready in a month and because they have so much other depth around. You know, you got Tony Gonsolin. You got David Price if you, if you, if he shows up and, and pitches well. Uh, you got Mitch White. You got I don't think Andre Jackson or Pepio will be on the roster that early in the season, uh, but it's possible. So, you know, it's almost where I wouldn't mind the Dodgers going to a six man rotation and just you know, trying to get everyone a little bit of extra rest. Like we talked about Kershaw, he's probably not going to give you 30 starts. You know, other than than Bueller and Julio, I don't know if anyone's going to make 28 or more starts this year. Um, and if the Dodgers go six man, you know, that would alleviate some of the stuff we saw last year. You know, Walker, Julio, we're going six plus innings every time out. We're taking the ball every fifth day. Basically having to go six or seven because they were either coming off of one bullpen game or two bullpen games. And by the time it got to the end of the season, they both faded a little bit, um, you know, slightly. And then into the postseason, they had to throw a short rest and different things. And it, it just didn't work out. And we talked about that all last year where that they were playing with fire a little bit. Um, but now they don't have to do that. They have enough arms to cover it. I think the, the lack of being able to option people so many times, they do call someone up. Uh, they'll leave them there a little bit longer and, you know, they won't have they won't be making as many moves to 
alleviate the pitching. They're gonna have to let guys pitch, and and I'm very and I'm I'm pro on that. I'm I'm pro on letting guys pitch. They would have let Mitch White pitch a little bit more last year. You know, he might have surprised. He might have struggled, but he might have surprised. Um, you know, this year Pepio and, and Andre Jackson, I'm sure some point will come up, and you know, you gotta let them pitch, and you gotta let them uh, do what they're gonna do. So, Tyler Anderson, a solid depth signing. Stick him there in the fifth spot of the rotation. Don't have to worry about him. Hopefully, and it, it works out for the Dodgers. So we're gonna talk about Freddie Freeman's press conference, and then just kind of what happened in the first game of the first games of spring training. First, let's talk about Built Bar. Built Bar is the best tasting protein bar out there. I've said it over hundreds of times now, and it's still true. I still have Built Bars in my cabinet, and not ones that they sent me, ones that I personally bought. They're good. They taste good. They do taste like a candy bar. They they are, you know, great tasting, but they are good for you. They do have a lot of protein, low sugar, low calories, low carb. They're perfect for a snack. They're perfect for a little, you know, dessert. They're perfect for a pre-workout. They're perfect for post-workout. Whatever you need it for, Built Bars are there for you. Little snack on the go if you need it. And they also have Built Puffs, which is a protein-infused marshmallow, which tastes even more like a candy bar and is still really good for you. So, Check them out. Go to Built.com. Check it all out. They got a bunch of different flavors. They're always adding flavors, changing flavors. You can get a mixed box. Try all the flavors. But go to Built.com. Check it all out. And guess what? You can get 15% off right now with the promo code LOCK15 at Built.com. Just go to lock, just go to Built.com. Use the promo code LOCK15, and you'll get 15% off your order. All right. So, like I mentioned, Freddie Freeman, officially a Dodger. On Friday, passes physical on Thursday, Fishy Dodger on Friday. The introductory press conference was, I mean, I guess it makes sense. Not so much about the future with the Dodgers and a little bit more about what happened with the Braves and how he ended up becoming a Dodger. Uh, you know, some of the standout things that he said was once the Braves was kind of, you know, over and the Dodgers were interested, it kind of made sense, and, and he was ready to come on home. You know, he says his, that his family gets to see him play all the time back like back when he was in high school. He mentioned that the Dodgers were in contact before the lockout. They had a good conversation with Friedman and, and Roberts, um, but Friedman did, you know, admit that he didn't think it was much of a possibility, and then when it did kind of become more of a possibility that the Dodgers were ready to jump at it, and you know, make it happen, and that's what happened. Um, we saw we've seen a lot of conflicting reports, and and Freddie Freeman added to that with, you know, exactly what happened between him and the Braves. He said that they didn't contact him, and this he said they didn't contact him, which means that they could have contacted his agency or his agent. Um, but they didn't. He only they said they only contacted him twice. Um, they weren't willing to go to that six year. He was a little bit upset about it, you know, in general. Uh, he said he was blindsided by the Matt Olson trade. And and then when it came to Alex Anthopoulos kind of choking back when he was talking about the Matt Olson trade, basically talking about the fact that that meant that Freddie Freeman's not coming back. Uh, Freddie Freeman just said that he saw them. Uh, and that's all he has to say about that. So you can tell that. It wasn't a clean and nice breakup with the Braves. He still feels some type of way about it. Obviously, the it's still fresh as well. So obviously, he, you know, he has those emotions and, and they're there. But despite all that, he's excited to be a Dodger. Excited to be back. Like I said, excited to be back with his family. Uh, being able to see him. You know, he he went to school in Orange County, but he grew up a Dodger fan, and. Yeah, he looks good in Dodger blue. I can't. I mean, you know, I can't lie. He looks good in Dodger blue. He's supposed to play his first spring game on Tuesday tomorrow, so that'll be exciting to see. Uh, in terms of the rest of the weekend, we saw Clayton Kershaw ended up. It was supposed to be Bo Burrows starting on Friday in the first spring training game. Uh, Kershaw ended up starting that game. He looked all right. He was healthy. That's the that's the main part. Obviously, he wasn't happy with his performance, but he didn't do, you know, he think he went two innings, didn't give up a run or one hit, no strikeouts. But he's healthy. That's the biggest part of it. Um, some standouts from the weekend, Victor Gonzalez, who we already know came into camp much slimmer than before. He had a nice outing, uh, one inning, two strikeouts. Carson Fulmer, the guy who they got in the Rule 5 draft, 
or rule minor league rule five draft. He his changeup looked nasty. His changeup, he got two strikeouts in, in one outing on Sunday, and his changeup went in on righties, in and in in and down uh, uh, or on right handers, in and down um, or just down. He he had two change or he had two looking changeups. It might have just been a switch of the grip a little bit, but they looked nasty. He looked good. Uh, nobody looked bad, really. Or that pitch, you know, not everyone pitched. Walker Buehler hasn't pitched yet. Uh, Julio hasn't pitched yet. We saw uh, – who did we see? We saw Gratterall was seemed to be working on some stuff, throwing a lot more off-speed stuff. We saw Vessia had an inning. Yeah, I mean, not everyone has thrown yet. Um, and obviously, you know, some of these games – on a weekend, hard for me to watch them all, uh, but I did see some of them. And in terms of pitching, uh, you know, not too bad. We had good at bats from a few guys. Gavin Lux had a good at bat on Sunday with bases loaded. Uh, fouled off a few, ended up hitting a sack fly, but it was a good long at bat. He looks comfortable up there. Cody Bellinger uh, looks comfortable up there. Results not quite there yet, but he is still, you know refining making sure his swing is is stable and if you know if he can give the Dodgers whatever he can give uh Justin Turner guys first hit out of the way on Sunday Mookie Betts is yet to play he's supposed to play this week um you know Chris Taylor obviously always having good at but I saw Chris, I saw like three or four Chris Taylor at bats and almost all of them uh went to a full count so he's you know the same guy that he's always going to be working the count and trying to get the pitch that he wants to hit uh, Austin Barnes looks a little, a little more jacked than before. Um, he hit a hit a home run in the sim in a sim game last week. Didn't hit a home run this weekend, but he looks a little more jacked. So maybe he'll have some more power. I don't know, or at least he'll be more durable to hold up uh, throughout the entire year. Other than that, there wasn't too much standing out from the plate. You know, James Outman's been getting some at bats. I, someone asked us if he looked like Jack Peterson with his stance. Uh, a little bit at the beginning of the stance, but once the actual swing was nothing like Jack Peterson. Uh, but he's a guy that who's on the 40 man could theoretically contribute this year. You got you know, Matt Beatty got some time. Edwin Rios got time. Um, yeah, it was just, you know, we, the, the ones I want to watch in spring, you know, I'm not too concerned with the veterans. Even if they don't look that great, I'm not concerned about it. But, you know, when I'm watching spring training, I'm looking at the pitching to see, okay, are they working on something specifically or are they trying to get out? That's how you can help judge a spring training uh, outing. You know, if Gratterall is throwing a bunch of you know cutters and sliders or whatever, clearly he's trying to work on those pitches and not trying to throw 100 miles per hour sinkers like he normally does. So, you know, you take whatever the results are with a grain of salt. Um, you see a guy like Clayton Kershaw, veteran. He's probably not working on anything. He's just trying to get out, trying to find, get a feel, and him specifically, you know, trying to make sure he stays healthy and see how his arm feels. He has a little bit of different things. Um, but I'm I'm more excited about the young guys. You know, we saw Miguel Vargas, Andy Pajes get some at-bats. We saw Michael Bush, who I'm excited about to see because he's, you know, his bats getting been getting hyped up. In theory, let's just say if they trade Lux, he's a guy that could come up and fill that. And you know, he can play second and first, DH if they need to. Is supposed to have a major league ready bat. He's a guy that you know I want to see. He had a double on Sunday, uh, but that's a guy that you, that you want to see and, and and see what he can do. And you know, in terms of like position battles, there's really not any position battles. There are spots on the roster battles and you know Edwin Rios and Matt Beatty are probably getting a majority of the looks in terms of making the roster Zach McKinstry as well because like I said there's only a couple of spots available and or maybe even just one spot available for a few guys uh once Hanser Alberto Hanser Alberto gets here so those guys are, are playing for spots and it's just fun to have baseball back. You know, it's Joe Davis was on the call on, on Friday and Saturday uh, with Eric Caros, and it was just great to have baseball back. The Dodgers were playing pretty much every day the rest of the way until the regular season. So enjoy it. Um, 
you know, as we say every year, spring training results don't matter too much uh, in terms of wins and losses, in terms of actual things, you know, in terms if somebody goes over 37 in spring training, you might be slightly uh, worried. But at the end of the day, you know, maybe they were working on a different type of swing or only going to swing at certain types of pitchers or, you know, you never know what everyone's thing is in, in spring, especially for a veteran. He might be looking to do something different. Young guy might be looking more to produce, whatever the case is. So just enjoy the fact that baseball is back. Watch these spring training games. Don't get too crazy yet. And we'll continue to monitor and watch the situation in terms of the roster, in terms of bullpen, in terms of starting rotation. We're going to have all that, you know, analysis the rest of the way here in spring. That's going to do it for today's episode. Thank you all for listening. Thanks for making Locked On Dodgers your first listen of the day every day. We'll be back tomorrow to talk about the spring, what happened in the spring training game, uh, any updates on anyone else, and any other stories that come out of spring training. Uh, if you need a second listen of the day or third listen of the day, if you're, looking, if you're listening to Locked On MLB Prospects, check out Locked On MLB with Paul Francis Sullivan. Sully brings you his unique perspective on the major leagues, past and present. It's free and available wherever you get podcasts. Make sure to follow us on social media, Twitter and Instagram at Locked On Dodgers. Jeff is on Twitter at Snydog. I'm at Vince Samperio. If you want to call and leave us a voicemail or send us a text, you can do so at 323-863-5625. Or you can always send us an email, LockedOnDodgers at gmail.com. We're here every weekday morning, and we hope you'll be with us when you get in your car or if you're at home. Tell your smart device play a podcast, Locked On Dodgers. And remember, you don't have to agree. You just have to listen. Have a good one.